let's take two orthogonal inertial frames S and S prime that move one relatively to the other with constant velocity v. Let's suppose S fixed and S prime moving from left to right in the positive direction of the x axis. We put the time t equals zero at the instant at which S prime passes through S. The transformation of the coordinates in S and S prime is given by the Lorentz transformation. We would like to put this in a more symmetrical form. For doing this, we change the unit measurements. We take Lightia for the x and the x prime axis, here for the t and t prime axis, and fraction of the light speed c for the velocity v. With these new measurements, equation 1 keeps the same expression as before. But instead, writing the dimensional equation of the second term of the force, we realize that equation 4 becomes written in this form. And this is the new Lorentz transformation written in the new unit measurements. The most interesting coordinates are the time t and the distance x in the direction of the motion, as y and z coordinates remain constant. So we put x and t on this graph, that is the s space time, and x prime and t prime on this graph for the frame s prime. The points on these graphs represent events in their respective space times. To construct the Minkowski space, first we begin by drawing the t prime and x prime axis of the s prime frame on the s space time. We put into one x prime equals zero, the equation of the t prime axis of s prime. And we obtain the equation of the green line in the graph. Then, to obtain the x prime axis in S, we put t prime equals zero, the equation of the x prime axis of S prime, into the fourth, obtaining the equation of the other green line in the graph this line. Now, this angle and this angle have the same value and increasing the speed of the S prime frame that its two axes close like a schisso until they reach the red line that describes the motion of a light beam. Now, Let's concentrate on the unit measurement segments. On both the S and the S prime space times, the unit measurements of time and length are represented by a segment of the same length. In the S frame, in the S prime frame. To measure time and length, we prepare two clocks and two meters that are perfectly equal when measured in quiet and in the same reference frame. We put one clock and one meter in S and the others in S prime. The aim is to determine the length of the unit segments of the T prime and X prime axis on this graph. This is the unit time segment in S prime. Its origin 
coincides with the origin of S. To determine where the other extreme stays, we use the square displacement whose value is equal in S and S prime because the displacement is a constant of the motion. Its expression is this. So, we write the square displacement from the origin for S and S prime getting this equation. Substituting the coordinates of the point 0, 1 into the second member, the equation becomes the equation of an hyperbola. On this hyperbola and the point 0, 1 of the T prime axis stays on this hyperbola, it's here. Pay attention that the S prime axis are oblique, so we have oblique coordinates and this point has coordinates 0, 1 in S prime. This is the segment of the unit time length and repeating it linearly along the T prime axis we obtain the scale of the T prime axis. In the same way substituting the point 1 0 into the second member of this equation we obtain the equation of another hyperbola. This is the extreme of the unit length segment that repeated linearly along the x prime x generates the scale of the x prime axis. This has completed the construction of the Minkowski space. If we put an event on it, its orthogonal coordinates are the coordinates in the S frame and its oblique coordinates are the coordinates in the S prime frame. To show this, I put this event on it. In the S frame, the coordinates of this event are 5, 4. Why its oblique coordinates in the S prime reference, which moves with constant velocity 0.6c, are 3.25, 1.25, according to the numerical calculations.